Welcome, welcome to uh, another edition of TLG Talks. This is my interview uh, uh, process with the Trowbridge Law Group. I'm Gene Trowbridge. I'm the founding uh, partner of the law group, and we're syndication attorneys. We write private placement memorandums for uh, for you if you're trying to raise money from a group of people. We concentrate in the Regulation D and Regulation A marketplace, and I'm glad you're with us today. And I'm especially happy to have one of my good friends and a powerhouse in the business of syndication. Uh, Lynn Morrow is the Executive Vice President of Lifestyles Unlimited. Uh, Good morning to you, and thanks for joining me. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. That's great. Say... um, Lynn, tell me a little bit about your your background in the real your background. Sure, um, I you know came from uh, kind of a middle class background. My parents uh, were real estate investors, along with the other things that they did. But like many people in that generation, um, real estate was an aside and not something that they really taught me. It was just always kind of there. So uh, there was no deliberate lessons in being a real estate investor. It was still that standard paradigm of go to school, get good grades, get into a good university, hire on with a great company and retire on a, a pension and your, your 401k, right? That was the, the paradigm. And I followed that for many years. Um, in my first, what I guess we would call real job out of school, right? I um, uh, joined a very large company, a, a multi-billion dollar worldwide company. And on Black Friday in 1987, it was October 1987, and today I will never forget, we were at a very large meeting and all of a sudden, all the executive team and the managers ran out of the room. And of course, they were trying to get to telephones to trade their stocks because everything was falling apart. And, you know, so they had received, um, you know, at that time, we didn't have cell phones and all this kind of great stuff. They had received uh, 911 messages on their pagers and um, from their families and whoever was watching. And so I uh, later talked to my boss who lost nearly all of his life savings that day because he was not able to reach his trader. And that had a big impact on me as far as the traditional paradigm. And so I never participated very much in, in that type of investment. And it set me up for looking for a different way. And then I went on to have a family. Um, I uh, left that company when there was a merger, took an out package, stayed home with my two young children, took on a variety of independent work. um, And in 2001, ended up going to Texas. And I was from California and just kind of looked around and went, wow, we're we're not as business friendly as we used to be. And, uh, you know, was looking for a, uh, a state that didn't have state income taxes and that was more business friendly. So I moved to Texas and, um, but again, took a traditional job. And just before the crash, heard a radio show. Um, it was Del Wamsley, the founder of Lifestyles Unlimited. And it just made a lot of sense to me, you know, and it was really simple, right? You can make $250 a month on a rental property. And at that time, there was so much hype going on with the bubble. Um, and that just sounded realistic. So I went down and learned from him. I'm not really a guru follower. So that was the first seminar I had ever been to and um, made so much sense to me as he went through the path from uh, you know, traditional work paradigm into being an entrepreneur in the real estate industry and then single family. But what I was most interested in was multifamily and multifamily syndications. And so that education um, really appealed to me and joined Lifestyles Unlimited and entered the world of, you know, multifamily investing. You know, that's funny. So I imagine you're a passive investor because you're so busy, you couldn't you couldn't combine being a syndicator with being a passive investor. And Lynn, I get all sorts of calls from people at Lifestyles and the call goes something like this. Gene, I'm in 27 passive deals Mm -hmm. and I wanna be a syndicator. And my first response is, why? Why? (laughs) 
<laughs> Why would you want to do this? Obviously, being in 27 deals as a passive investor is working for you and you're doing whatever you're doing in your business and maybe it's time to retire and just live off of that passive income. But why would you want to want to do that? And there's all sorts of crazy conversations I've had about that. But, but that's okay. You know, I've interviewed three or four people. I think I've done 32 of these interviews and I've interviewed three or four people purposely who don't want to be syndicators mm -hmm. who are in the real estate business never want to be syndicators their clients are the people that they list properties for and sell properties for and they don't want another group of people to uh, destroy their weekends and their evenings <laughs> uh, they'd be called passive investors they don't want that right. and you know that's what drove me out of being a syndicator uh, in uh, 1995, I, I was just finished with the tax season and we had sent out about 1,700 K-1s ourselves and we had about 850 investors and I went home to the kitchen table with my wife where all the great decisions in my life had been made and I said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. There mm -hmm. must be some other way I can stay in this industry uh, rather than uh, dealing with the care and maintenance of all these passives. And so we decided right then and there, I'd go to law school, which was a good idea because I thought it would be what I would do for the last 15 years of my working career because I was clearly going to retire at 60. <laughs> well, this week I had my 73rd birthday and I'm still doing this, you know. So uh, uh, passive investors are a burden and a blessing. There's no... There's no doubt That's about right. that. So you <laughs> you listened to Dell and you went and got some training. What was your path to becoming executive vice president? Because that put you in that puts you second, right. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right. That that really wasn't the intent. My intent was to be a syndicator, and um, I was working toward that when. I was able to replace my income and I've been a business consultant through the, the last half of my career. And um, I was asked to come in and, and turn around the vendor program in the Lifestyles Dallas office and then was asked to work on the single family mentoring program and uh, then through a, a, a series of of events, Dell and I ended up in his office together with me resigning, actually. I was good. It's like, you know, I've done what I can do here and now I'm going to go be a syndicator. And, uh, you know, Dell said, well, you know, you keep saying that this, that this company could be so much more, you know, tell me about that. And um, as one of, one of the fun things about consulting is getting to come up with ideas for other people to implement while you go home and have a nice dinner, right? You know, and, uh, and go, go to sleep and wake up early and drink your coffee and have a relaxing day, right? Mm -hmm. So it was real fun. We talked all day, probably one of the, the best days that I've, I've had in business, you know, a really creative conversation about what could happen. And at the end of that day, when I think I'm going to get back on a plane and go back to Dallas, Texas, and I'm going to, um, you know, start my syndication business, at the end of that conversation, he says, no, you have to, you have to do this, right? Lifestyles needs you mm -hmm. to, to do this with your skill set and our ability to work together. Um, we need somebody with this vision and ability to take us to the next level. And so it it was too compelling of an offer for someone who business is a hobby as well, mm -hmm. right? Is to take Lifestyles Unlimited and go, wow, can I make it happen? Can, can That's exciting. Yeah. You know, when I, I interviewed Dell, and I don't know if you saw the interview, but somewhere along the line, I asked him uh, what he saw for the future in the next two or three years. And he, he said, well, I know what the future is. He said, it's Lynn. He said, I've already got the person who's going to continue to take the company. And I, I remember it's been almost 12 years ago that uh, um, I came to Houston. And I sat at a, at a coffee shop with you and Dell, and we talked about some things that were, were happening in, in as far as leads go and in the syndication uh, part of the, uh, of the world. It's funny, I've had two, two types of interviews like that in my life when I walked out of the interview, I said, well, that was nice. I talked to them once and I'll never hear, I'll never hear from them again. And mm -hmm. uh, that hasn't been the way this has turned out. And my other one is, is a syndicator here in Newport Beach who I went in and 
interviewed and gave him my best pitch and I walked out of there. I said, never, never. I've done 128 deals with that syndicator since uh, 2014. So I'm not very good on assessing my interview uh, <laughs> skills, but, but you, just, uh, you just never know. Um, so what do you think, um, well, first of all, what, do you, what does lifestyles do for someone who wants to be a syndicator, Lynn? Lifestyles is really interesting. It, it's, it's a company that it's an education and mentoring company. And we take people from all walks of life, all different types of backgrounds and teach them uh, real estate investing from the ground up, right? Just the basics of real estate investing, single family and multifamily. We think people need to understand both businesses at a basic level. And then if they decide to go into multifamily, we have a whole education program for syndicators that's been put together, not from an academic perspective, but from the, the ground floor where the rubber meets the road, real operations, real people doing this. And that's what's great about the whole organization is our mentors are out there in the business doing what we teach successfully. And so, um, and as you know, you have been a tremendous resource for our, you know, legal part of our education. You deliver a lot of that education. Um, but, you know, I deliver a course on, on SEC um, compliance. And I think that's something that passive investors as well as syndicators need to understand. They need to understand the business. They need to understand everything about it. And a, a successful passive investor is very knowledgeable about the business. Like you say, they, they don't want to do the work of the business. And so we're providing our money so that someone else can do that work and benefit from it as well. But I think really understanding the, the syndication process how to, you know, I love, I love your class. You have a class that's, you know, how to syndicate without going to jail. I mean, that's it, right? It, it, you're going to ruin everything if, if you don't get that part right. And then operations, we have a real focus on operations. And that's where a lot of syndicators fail is it's the excitement of the deal. And um, everybody gets excited about the deal and chasing after that deal and bringing it down is the exciting part. Um, but then after it, you own this asset and you have a fiduciary responsibility to your investors to make that asset produce to the best of your ability. And so we put a lot of focus on operations after the sale. And um, that I think is, is Lifestyles Unlimited and what we do. And, and we also have a huge community. It's over 50,000 members after 30 years. And that is a lot of brain power, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. And when, when a large group of people agree to share information openly and transparently and to help each other, that creates a very powerful ecosystem. Well, that's true. And, and one of the things I'm, I'm harping on now is the, the word sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're, you take sophisticated investors into your deal, I think there's a different level of sophistication today. I, th I think passive investors are responsible for learning about the asset type in which they're going to invest in, in lifestyles, trains people to invest in multifamily. But there's also in my business, we do mobile home parks and self-storage and senior living and all that stuff. And I think you have to take the responsibility as a passive to learn about those asset types. Um, Last year, we did a blind pool in on racehorses. Hmm. And to be sophisticated enough to invest in a 100-unit apartment building or a blind pool of racehorses is probably two different levels of uh, sophistication. And I don't think the syndicator is responsible for educating the passive investor about the asset class. They're responsible for educating them about their offering, okay? Uh, but not the whole asset class. So I'm real big on, on referring passive investors to places like Lifestyles or the, the mobile home university that I, that I work with, wherever uh, asset class information is available. I think they need to uh, learn about this, but you said something that I hadn't thought about. You said the passive should learn something about the syndication process. I haven't, I haven't stressed that, but that's, that is true because they get all these papers and they read the papers and they don't know. And 
heaven forbid, sometimes the lead get all these papers and they don't read the papers and they don't know. So, <laughs> so we've got all these people out there not exactly knowing what they're doing and it, it, it can be a, uh, a situation. So I know that um, uh, the Lifestyles Group buys a lot of multifamily properties all and all over the country because you're expanding. Uh, we, we've, I've been to meetings of your people in Arizona and are you in Georgia? Uh, are, yeah. are, you're in Georgia. So, you know, we've been to that. Someone in my office went to a meeting in Georgia. So yeah. what do you think is, what do you think will happen in the next two or three years about that business model of concentrated on multifamily properties in the Lifestyles organization? I think we're going to continue to see opportunities in the tertiary markets that we've been seeing rise in the past several years. And certainly um, as as interest in this area of real estate has increased over the past decade, um, the tertiary markets become a great opportunity for the smaller and medium sized syndicators. And we're seeing that across the country. And we've been able to create a network of, we call them ambassadors, but they live in uh, cities of all sizes across the US and they bring together people in their area and form the base for the knowledge of the marketplace in that area. And then we bring in experts to add to that knowledge base and it allows syndicators to choose markets. So we're now seeing syndicators choosing markets that are not their home market Mm -hmm. and they have a connection. And I think it's important to have a connection to the market. A lot of them grew up in a certain area. They have family in a certain area. It's easy for them to travel there. They have a place to stay. They have, you know, a grounding in the area. And so we're seeing more and more syndicators go to the markets rather than focus just on the market where they live. And I think we'll continue to see that. We've even seen several syndicators uh, just this year move. We're seeing them move from Mm -hmm. where they've been into the market that they think is going to be good for them to build. So they might buy one property there, uh, see the opportunity, and then move into that market, which is something we hadn't seen a lot of before. And I think we're going to see uh, the rise of those small to medium sized operators. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly getting a lot more attention than we did in the past. Um, And raising money uh, continues to be a something that the syndicator needs to be educated about. They need to think about it before they jump in. Before you sign the contract, you need to have the plan for where your fundraising is going to come from. And and I think that syndicators often uh, think that they have large enough lists. They think they know enough people and have those relationships. And then it can get to be a little frazzling. So one of the things we do is try and get people to really prepare for that and um, make sure that they have the contacts and the community and the friendships and relationships that they need and size their their property to that list uh, so that they can successfully fundraise. And so it's, I think we're gonna see, um, everybody needs a place to live. We are seeing uh, the drive out to the tertiary markets. We're seeing, um, And I think that will continue. We're probably going to see a little bit of return to the cities. There's too much compelling things that go on in a city center and the way of life. So I'm I'm not in the camp that the cities are dead. Um, I I think we'll we'll see that come back. But um, we also have a lot less people buying homes. They're, They're choosing. We have a lot of members who rent and own their own rental. It's really interesting. And it's just what they choose. They're a lot of uh, younger people. The first property they buy is a rental property, not their own home. And I think that's an interesting shift. And I think it's healthy for their finances, right? You buy enough rental property, then that covers the cost of your mortgage. We call that chunking, right? Um, How many rental properties do you need to pay for the home you want to live in? And um, so it's a healthier approach to finances as well. So I'm happy to see that change. So, and I think we got a lot of political change going on too. So we'll need to be um, responsive in many ways and, and proactive in communicating and offering up different solutions to solve the problems 
that we're facing. In the last couple of days, I've interviewed two, two members at Lifestyles in, in this process. And one of them is um, opening up uh, Cincinnati for his tertiary market, along with his Texas market. He's going to Cincinnati uh, to do that, which is interesting. And the other one said that the first property he ever bought was a duplex and he lived in half of it and basically lived for free while he amassed money to go, uh, to go forward. And so that's uh, uh, what you're saying is, is actually true. And I'm just gonna make a comment that probably is only useful to you and me. But it's one thing to have a great big list of investors. It's one thing to have a huge Rolodex. It's one thing to have a huge CRM. It's another thing to have a pre-existing substantive relationship with right. people in that. And uh, all across my business, I get questions. Hey, I've got these people. I've got 800 people in my database. What can I do? And I say, well, how many of them do you know? Well, 12. Okay, now let's talk about what can you do with the 12? And what do you need to do with the 782 that uh, you need to work on? You know, so that, and we have that problem at, uh, at Lifestyles, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, well, this is very, very interesting. I'm, I'm so glad you came on the interview uh, uh, with me. Uh, the last question I've asked every person I've interviewed in this series of TLG Talks is, what advice would you have for rookies, rookie syndicators, what advice? Well, I work with a lot of rookie syndicators. And so I would- I call, Excuse me. I think you call them aspiring. Aspiring leads. <laughs> um, so, right, language matters. <laughs> uh, but, you know, people that are new to the business, um, there are some common things that I've observed over the years that result in success. One is commit to being a lifelong learner. If you're, if you're the smartest person in the room, then when something goes wrong, you can never ask a question, right? Because you're supposed to be the one with all the answers. So as you, as you go through and you succeed at things, remember where you came from, remember your roots and enjoy this time of learning and being brand new to the business and absorb all you can. Um, make the relationships, what you were talking about, spend the time to make a phone call, to have coffee, to have meetings in small groups and get to know the people because the people who invest with you will determine how much you enjoy being a syndicator. Um, syndicators focus on the deal, but uh, investor relations is really important. Learn to communicate well with your investors. Don't be afraid to deliver you know, some temporary bad news or a setback. They will understand if they have information. It's the lack of information that makes investors panic. And Take the time to get your documents right up front. You'll never have a better time than before you're launching your business to look at your syndication documents, make sure they reflect how you want to run your business. So when something happens, the consequences based on your documents are what you want to occur and not something random that you didn't catch up front. And then the last piece of advice I have for them is don't jump in to something just to get a deal. Another one will be right behind it. And it's hard to believe in certain market cycles where things are tight and competition is heavy, but it's true. If you're patient and you have a model you're working, the thing that you know you can do best, wait for it. You'll be glad that you did because when you settle for something less, it becomes a struggle for you because it do, it's not a match with your skill set. And so wait for that right deal. It will come and it'll come a lot sooner than you think. Those are all really great pieces of, uh, of information. Uh, sometimes when I'm interviewed, people ask me what mistakes I might have made. And I always allude to the time that I was going to a conference, an international financial planning conference, and all my competitor syndicators were going to be there with their booths and their offerings and whatever. And I didn't have an offer. And so I rushed into a deal just so I'd have a deal to sell at the conference. 
And that turned out to be a mistake for myself and my investors. It, was a, it turn, didn't turn out to be a very good deal. And it was just because I rushed. I did a deal before the credit union that was in formation actually got their permit to be oh. the tenant in the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, the state all of a sudden stopped issuing permits for credit unions. And I had an empty building under construction. <clears throat> so we, had, we struggled. I became the tenant. I didn't want to be the tenant, but I became. So anyhow, we, that was a mistake that we made. And, and I, I agree. I know that not everyone should be a syndicator. There's no personality test for a syndicator. Maybe there would be, but I, I think over the time, your more experienced syndicators would agree with the fact that this really is more of a people business. I was going to say more of a people business than a real estate business, but that may be overstating it, but it's certainly more of a people business than they thought. Yes. So you need to be prepared. The care and maintenance of partners can, what well, drove me out of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I, I it did. And uh, so I think that's important. Um, many of the uh, many of the people I've interviewed and asked that question to added uh, the issue of continuity. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do this alone. Yes. There are other skill sets that you don't possess that a second or third person will possess. It'll make it easier. And during this time that we're talking, we've all seen trouble with the uh, the syndicator or certain syndicators and their health and, and different things going on. It's nice to have a team to work with. So I think that I know you, you preach that. And I certainly preach that in our business to uh, have a plan for continuity. Well, that's been a great half hour, Lynn. I certainly appreciate it. And um, I don't know how you want to uh, people to try to contact you or not on the slide you see. I have the website for Lifestyles uh, Incorporated. And I think that uh, you might just tell us if someone wanted to get a hold of Lynn, sure. how would you want them to do that? Just Lynn, L-Y-N-N -N, at L-U-I-N-C dot com. That's simple. That's yeah. simple. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. I hope thank you, you for having me on. Have a great day. And I know I'll be talking to you soon, okay? Bye. Bye.